Well, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Guys, this Thank is Kendra you. Lust, if you didn't already know that. She is just a cool, absolute gem of a human being. Obviously a huge sports fan. We've got the Jordan jersey in the background. You're just showing yeah. off your intercontinental title. You've got championships at home. I know that you're a huge yeah. MMA enthusiast. Um, but let's start with the things that you are known oh. for. Right. Oh, wait, what does that shirt say? I mean, I touched my boobs, Misha but I really meant to say Misha. Yay. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Where did Love you her. get that shirt? I need that shirt. She sent it to me. Why did she send me I, a wait, shirt? Wait, wait, not this shirt. The f- Misha. She, I think she sent me another one. I misspoke. My husband ordered this one for me. And then we have some for our daughter and stuff. So, yeah. How cool is Misha? Isn't yeah. she just the shit? She's the best. She I love really her. She really is. I yeah. thoroughly enjoy working with her. She's like, she's such a trip. I love that she just calls people out and says shit and is like yeah. so unapologetic. She's a badass. Very, very yeah. Cool. But she's genuine, you know, and yeah. she's like, there, no I don't bullshit. feel like there's a bad bone in her body, yeah. you know, and, and it comes from a place of authenticity and honesty. So I like, I just like her style. So I love it. I'm sorry no if I'm a little approach. hoarse. Like, um, oh, I'm the COVID same right now here. too. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think I have COVID, but I definitely yeah. have like something is happening right yes. now. That's like, I'm like chugging fluids and like, just hoping for the best right now. So me and you are in the same boat right now, girlfriend. Yeah. Same, okay. same. Okay. Um, okay. Let's, let's go back to, uh, to, to, you know, the, the adult film industry, because I have so many questions. I'm so fascinated by all of this. Um, you initially were a nurse, correct? You went to school for nursing. Yes. Still um, a nurse. Oh, you so, are still a nurse. Yeah, I keep, you know, I would feel really terrible if I didn't keep up my, you know, certification just because it what was a real pain. Keep that up? You, you have continuing education credits. So every two years you have to complete 25 CEUs or whatever. So, and they're constantly changing depending on the state that you're in. So it's just good. It kind of keeps you up to date with some of the, you know, current treatment modalities and just patient care and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so it's, oh, hell it's yeah. kind of a pain, but, um, to do that, but I just, I don't want to, uh, let that lapse and then sure. you know, regret it. So, yeah, no, that's really smart. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like, Hey, who knows? Maybe one day you'll need that. And you'll be like, damn it. You should have kept that going. So yeah. yeah, good on you for keeping that alive. So you've made like an absolute empire for yourself. Um, I mean, geez, you've done so much stuff even outside of the adult film world, but going back to that, I mean, to, to be able to produce and direct and star in, um, did you think when you first stepped into that world that you would have taken on as much as you were able to take on and make such a name for yourself as like a woman in that industry? Yeah. Um, you know, I really, I didn't have plans of really doing anything outside of, uh, essentially the whole goal. And it wasn't just for the money. However, it was just family circumstances kind of led me down that path. And I always say like, nobody grows up and says, yeah, I want to do porn for a living. Yeah. That's, you know, come on, let's be real. Right. So, (laughs) um, so yeah, so I just essentially wanted to make extra money, uh, for my family and just stash it. And I I was so naive to the fact that the internet is so vast and there's so many people that have so much access to it. So I was just naive. I mean, I had my drawer full of DVDs in my own private collection. <laughs> I thought, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, six months after I started, people started to find out. So I thought, you know, like there's no turning back at this point. And, uh, you know, my husband said, well, I'll go big or go home. And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, who cares? You know, it's, it's our life. And, you know, so that's kind of how it started, but I never thought I would do any of the stuff that I did once I started yeah. at all. I just, I guess I didn't have, sad to say, I didn't have much of a plan when I first got in. So, right. It was more of a, yeah. I mean, not to say it was just about the money, but it was a means to keep stuff going for your family. You kind of do what you have to do. Um, I mean, as you, you know, you kind of start this off by saying, you, you know, you don't grow up being like, oh, I want to get into porn, but do you remember the first time that you watched porn and like what those feelings were for you or yeah, it's like what that kind of conjured up. Okay. So I was really young. I discovered a pair. Oh my gosh. I don't even, my mom listens to some of these. So mom, if <laughs> Sorry, you probably mom. didn't even know about this, it was probably dad's because I would also I like really- my parents to stop listening right now too. If you are. Yes. I'll try to keep it. Um, PG 13. Oh, who cares? Have at okay. it. 
Okay. Yeah. I just discovered this VHS tape and, um, I was like, Ooh, what's this? And it, and I, I'm really thinking it was more for my dad. Cause there was a lot of girl, girl, I think it was mostly girl, girl. So I really loved watching it. I wish I knew the girl's name though, because uh, she had big hair, but these big boobs and, uh, this brunette, I don't know to this day, but I was just like, wow, that's hot. You know? So I was probably 13, 14 and, uh, yeah. I kind of took the tape and never gave it back. <laughs> did you like burn it out watching it a bunch of times? I'm sure I did. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. My dad probably never could say that it was hey, gone. Go, did you take my porn? Right. Like you can't. So it's like, uh, well, yeah. it's mine now. All mine. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, okay. So your first time, like, how do you get in to the industry, what was yeah. the first kind of step or the relationship yeah. you had with somebody to kind of open that door for you? Really? I had no, no one. I knew no one. I was, you know, in Michigan, still in Michigan. And I just, I didn't know who to talk to, or, you know, I, I didn't know anybody. So at that time, webcamming was kind of a thing. So, you know, I started webcamming and having fun with that. And then I realized there was a photographer from Sacramento who said that I should probably start a Twitter. So that, that's when I started a Twitter, I think it was 2011 or 12, and, and started to kind of network and, and see and research the big companies. And that's where I started to kind of reach out to people. So through, through social media, I was able to kind of connect with some people and not necessarily the right people. However, it gave me a chance to go out and I did. And God, that's a whole other story for another day. I mean, I stayed at the Ramada Inn, I think on Wilshire, which is like 45 minutes away from the Valley. And <laughs> I just, I didn't know where the hell I was. I didn't know traffic was so bad. I was just kind of like a deer in the headlights. You know, people were kind of looking at me like, why are you so nice? Like, why are you talking to people in this at Starbucks? I mean, I don't even like Star. I didn't like Starbucks then, but it kind of grew on me. So, you know, I just was kind of like a fish out of water. However, uh, I had a plan and I had to execute and, uh, it kind of worked out. So what I'm, was the I'm, plan? I'm grateful. Yeah. The plan was just to make a lot of money and, you know, like four or five days and then come home, you know? So that was it. Um, you know, the days I wasn't working at the hospital or I couldn't get overtime, you know, because our schedules were usually like a month, six weeks in advance where they'd be planned. So, you know, I'd work two, three, days. And then I'd have like a stretch of X amount off or, you know, so you could kind of coordinate things and yeah. granted they were fast trips and, you know, not a lot of sleep, but uh, luckily for my better half, you know, he was really great at kind of holding down the fort here. And yeah. So my, yeah, my partner in crime, so to speak, get that hustle in. So yeah. <laughs> you walk onto your first porn set. What do you <laughs> see? What oh do you God. learn? Oh what God. is like, what is happening? Like, like I, I mean, I've been on so many different types of sets, but like, sure, I'm sure that they are sure. like, what, like they must be very professional or are they not? Yeah. What, like, what yeah. is it like? Oh yeah. Well, it all depends on the producer and the company. Yeah. I'll be honest. And, and I'm not like crap talking about the industry. Everybody knows it is what it is, but it's like that in Hollywood too, right? There's sure. creeps oh everywhere. My God. Everywhere. Yeah. You know, and I think it's just, uh, I mean, for the most part, they're really professional, especially, you know, the bigger companies. Um, one of the first companies I worked, worked for was uh, Kink. Now that's when they had the armory in San Francisco. And that was just this big, I don't know if you've ever been or not, mm -mm. but it's this big building and it's cold and it's dark. And there are all kinds of rooms that have all different types of scenes set up. So it's, you know, um, electric, like a, a bird cage with these electrical things. There's people <laughs> being hog tied. There's, you know, all kinds of crazy things, uh, the, the fucking machines, you know, and that's the, one of the first ones that I did. And they did it with a, with a girl. And that was really cool. Very intense. And uh, I just wanted to just, I don't know, get a little crazy. And I knew kink was one of the largest, if not the largest companies out there. So I was like, how cool I can probably make the most money, you know, with them. And, uh, -huh. uh it's going to be professional and I'll, you know, be in a safe environment. And that was a really, really good experience. I loved it. I had fun. 
Isis loves uh, still performing and is amazing. So we had a great scene. So that was like cool, you know, pretty like chill, cool sailing. And then dun, 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 I uh, <laughs> shot for browsers and I, and I love them. I, you know, have a good rapport with the company and always have been treated well. However, this one, my first scene, <laughs> I was so scared because I'm doing this hot and mean and I'm pretty submissive. Like I'm a pleaser when it comes to women, when it comes to guys, like I'll whip that ass, you know, like you will bow down, but I can also be submissive, you know, it just depends. Right. Like, you know, I'm a switch when it comes to guys, Mm -hmm. but when it comes to, you know, women, I'm pretty submissive. I guess when it comes to younger, okay. I guess I'm a switch. Let's just put it that way. So I play switch. What's a switch. A switch is where you can be like submissive, but then again, you can be more dominating and then it just depends on your partner. So you're, you know, you're flexible, but it kind of goes back to being the pleaser, right? Which I am. Uh So hot and mean, I'm working with this. uh, I believe, oh God, I should know her name. I can see her face. Mm -hmm. She is Hungarian. She is a kick-ass performer. How do I not remember? I swear to God. I'm sure someone will tweet it to this us. This is terrible. For sure. This is hey, terrible. She, I'm so like, I can see her face and her big boobs and her presence. And she, I mean, she just exudes the ultimate like porn stuff, like sexuality and confidence and all of these things I'm not at this point, right? So <laughs> It was a little intimidating, but she was really, really nice and very experienced. So she was like, you know, just don't be worried. You know, this is how it's going to go. And, you know, we're going to have fun, whatever, blah, blah, blah. However, they set me up at that time with the most difficult director known to man. He is. And I'm like, wow, is this really how it's going to be? However, him and I got, I didn't like how he treated the staff. He was very condescending. And I mean, I even, oh my gosh, insulting. And I'm just like, oh my God, he's treating like the photographer like this. And the, you know, the lighting guy, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a tyrant, right? Like, I can't wait to see how this is going to go. Yeah. So I'm nervous. I'm like, oh my God, I need a little shot of something like to calm my nerves. So her and I, I don't know if we had something, okay, granted, we probably shouldn't have taken a little something from the house, but that's all we took was just a little <laughs> shot. Okay. So yeah. thank you. Talent awesome. should be little... able to take a shot. Should yeah, they just a little shot. one, loosen yeah. up a little bit. Right. Who? So kind of calms my nerves. However, when we, when we do the scene where we start, I'm just, you know, I'm listening and, and, you know, but I, for some reason, him and I, we got along really well. We, ha- we established a rapport. We started talking about Jordans and shoes and basketball. Uh-huh. So we ended up just being really cool. And he, he was really great and he was great with the talent, but I think his team, he ran a very tight ship. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so once the scene started flowing, I just became, I don't know. I just kind of out of, I don't want to say out of body experience. I'm not like a weirdo. I mean, I'm slightly creepy, but, um, <laughs> you know, but I just, it just flowed and it was natural and, and it was just natural. And I just try to forget about the camera and you're really not supposed to do that in the industry because you need to see angles and lighting and all that stuff. But you know, we, we, well, I thought it was pretty good in hindsight. It was probably pretty terrible, but it was fun. How do the scenes go in terms of like, Mm -hmm. do you, are like, are they shot from different, do you, shoot each scene several times to get different angles are there stop downs are like how does that how long does that take and are you so chafed by the end right oh god well yeah depends it depends (laughs) on the (laughs) director it depends on the director right so or the type of scene if it's a you know a feature you're on set for 12 hours I remember doing a feature for 18 hours for wicked and I was just like is this gonna end and it's a lot of like like you're hurry up, hurry up, do this, do this. And then you wait and you sit. Yeah. So, you know, it depends if it's Gonzo, it's usually just one camera. If it's, um, more of a storyline or a feature, you know, you have two camera, two cameramen, you know, so, um, sometimes three. So it just really depends. And, you know, your day can go really fast. It could be six hours. It could be four hours. I, you know, anything I think that is shot with, you know, a level of, I don't know, quality or care would be at least four to six hours. And then, you know, I would, I, you know, I never expect expected getting out of, you know, a shoot less than, you know, 
uh, eight hours, you know, so it just depends. So it's, you know, hair, makeup, pretty girls, um, dialogue, you know, so it just depends, but actual and what people want to know actual sex is only about 30 minutes. Really? I know. Right. We can all do this. You guys all do this. You outperform all of us in your own bedrooms. Okay. We just put it out there. So yeah, that's fascinating. Interesting. Okay. So did, how do guys manage through this? What do they do? Are they taking Viagra? What's like, what's keeping the dream alive for these guys? Yeah. So some are just honestly natural, natural, man, they just, I'm telling you, and it is just an, it's insane to think. And I, I don't, and then there are some, you know, because let's, let's face it, like how which, I mean, I don't know what it's like to have that. However, it's, you know, here, right. Most of the time that's connected. Sure. And, and it, when you have a room full of people or a, a director doing a POV and he's breathing down your neck. Okay. <laughs> you, I mean, we can fake it. Okay. You 100%. Know, you move, right? Sure. Okay. They can't, you know, to keep that edge, uh, there's no fluffers. Okay. He's his own fluffer. I mean, it's not my job, buddy. Okay. You got a job, <laughs> do your job. Okay. All right. We're professionals handling my stuff. You handle yours. However, I'm not a jerk. Okay. If we need to, you know, together, we can get through this because we want our day to be shorter. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to be here all day. He doesn't want to be here all day, you know, so, but there's no fluffers, generally professionals, the guys, they know what to do that, you know, and I'm sure some do pop a little something or shoot a little something, you know, sure. I don't ask, I don't care do what you got to do. Okay. Yeah. Let's just have an easy day. Okay. Let's sell this scene. Let's get okay? through the day. Let's get yeah. through this. You know, but I love it though. It's not like I don't, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. It's like, how can you despise or like, I mean, I would work with some people and they, they like most, you know, put the girls down. Cause I love women, but you could see they were over it. And it's like, I get it. You know, you've been doing it a long time. And it's like, just hang up the phone, honey, because you're doing me a disservice. I'm here to have some fun, sell the scene. Let's have a great day, you know, and, um, you know, you're thinking about what you're going to have for lunch and that's kind of pissing me off while you're standing yeah. in my vagina. Okay. No, <laughs> that's what you're having for lunch. That's, for that's lunch. it. Okay. That's what, it. what is the shelf life for a woman yeah. in the porn industry? Well, really I don't people. really know, to be honest, they say turnover is like six months. So yeah, girl wow. enters the business and then leaves in about six months. And then, you know, if a girl lasts uh, longer than a, a year, a couple years, I guess, then, you know, that's, 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 you know, then maybe they'll have longevity, but you know, it's just, there's so many variables within the industry itself. And then with civilian life and it's, it's, you know, it's complicated. And sure. I, if I were not older when I started and I didn't have, you know, you know, wasn't established and, you know, with my husband and things like that, mm-hmm. you know, I could very well have been somebody that entered and left. So, you know, I try not to really judge those that get into it because you don't know. I mean, sure. maybe they try it. It's a bucket list. They, you know, want to have some fun. And then, you know, so I don't know, honestly, shelf life, it, it's just depends on the person. What was the conversations like that you were having with your husband as you were deciding to mm-hmm. get into this? Mm-hmm. How does, how Ooh. does that kind of come together? Yeah, that's a good question. I've never been asked. So thank really? you. I like oh. new questions. Yeah. yeah. You're nice. You're a good interviewer. <laughs> so you know, these questions were, well, the one I remember, I'll, I remember where we were at, we were at a destination wedding in Jamaica. We were at the airport. We landed in the States and our phone was just going off crazy. And that's when people were like, oh, everybody knows whatever. And I was just like, it's not like I was some teen or like, you know, 18, 19, you know, I mean, I was more a grown woman. So like I said, my husband said, you know, go big or go home. And I was like, well, I don't know. And he's like, oh, you can't take it back. Let's be real. And we really don't have the money to try to take it back. I mean, let's, we just don't. Okay. At that point, we were just really excited to have maybe 20,000 in the bank. At yeah. Always. We were just like, yeah, that's cool. That's good. We're going to just maintain this and we can pay off this and do this, you know, and, and, um, and I'm not downing anyone. I mean, I know everyone's situation is different, but for us, we were really excited at that time, you know, in six months, we were able to just, you know, stockpile and whatever. Okay. So that was our goal then. So at that point, I, I, I just said, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, then we, we need to be smart about it. And, and him and I just had a lot of conversations about what I 
would be willing to do, let me just get this little, these little notifications. Um, what would I, you know, how far do I want to take it? Um, that's kind of when we started to develop not a plan, but just, I started looking to other girls to see what they did, to see how they became successful and to see how I could do that. Even though age was an issue, my agent sucked ass. Okay. She was terrible, you know, and I'll tell her and she knows why. And that's the type of person I am, you know, but she'll still come up and, oh my gosh, Kendra. And then I'll have to say, let's be real. We really don't care for each other. Let's move on. And that's, let's not pretend we're friends because that's the type of person I am. I'm a class act. There've been times. Okay. Maybe I had a little crazy, you know, whatever. But, you know, there's a time and a place, but I'm always a class act. And, um, you know, it was great. She was good. I'm not saying I didn't learn anything from her. So I really shouldn't say that. But in the end, she showed her true colors. And that was just disappointing. Yeah. Like I went to a woman for that reason, hoping that I wouldn't be be taken advantage of. And unfortunately, that was the circumstances. But you know what? That's okay. Things happen for a reason. And wish her all the best. Um, But yeah, so we just, him and I just were back and forth what I was comfortable with and what were what some he was of the limitations? With. Yeah. Like what were yeah. some of the limitations that you guys wanted to put on of things that you didn't want to do? Yeah, I was definitely no anal because I didn't even do anal. I didn't even do it in my personal life. Uh, yeah. So I didn't really know. And I think it was just because I didn't know what the hell, we didn't know what the hell we were doing, you know? And it's like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I want anal. My little one's up there playing Fortnite, <laughs> right? Brought it down to the living room on the 75 inch because you know she's mad that dad has covid and we can't she can't go to the holiday party with her friends so she's pissed off so she brings the whole system down there so she's oh my god playing online so if you hear that i apologize but i'm kind of she says she doesn't listen but i know better she's nosy (laughs) so anyway so it was just like no you know because we hadn't done it and then if we did try it was just like oh yeah just put it no you dumbass like that's not how it happens right Uh, uh. oh pain like through your whole soul. So (laughs) so that was one of the things that I was like, no. And then as the, my career progressed, I just thought, well, there were offers coming through and, and him and I talked about it. So I never did anything without him being comfortable with it, or I'm not just going to do something without talking. You just don't do that. You know, it's still work. It's a business and there's a respect factor and there's limits. And and I told him at any time, if you're uncomfortable with anything or this becomes an issue with us, I'm done. Like yeah. deuces, you know, thank you yeah. for what you, you know, the industry for what you've done. But my, my home and my family, my marriage is way more important than this alter ego life because it's, that's yeah. exactly what it is. It's not who I am. Right. So, yeah, of course. Um, okay. So you mentioned your daughter is there. She's uh, playing Fortnite and all that. Mm-hmm. How, what are the conversations you have with your yeah. daughter to explain yeah. these things that sure. of course she's going to come across and see? Ooh. Yeah. So, you know, she's pretty wise beyond her years. She's, um, very mature, kind of like an old soul, but real goofy. I don't know. She's just a cool kid and she's always kind of known something. And I think it bothered her. She said, why are people calling your name? You know, when we walk, it was at wrestling. It's the first time we took her to a wrestling wrestlers. They, they love it. Yep. Man. Oh yeah, man. Um, DDT. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so <laughs> he's like, why are they calling you Kendra? And I explained, I said, well, I do have a model name. And I kind of, we started there. That was like when she was around six or seven. And then these the years progressed and more or less, it became a little bit more age appropriate each year, each year. Well, you know, sixth graders tend to know a lot more than sixth graders did back when I grew up. Right. So uh-huh. she brought that to my attention. Um, you know, mom, I know more than you think I know. And I said, Oh, well, enlighten me. Let's, let's chat. (laughs) No, just want you to know. And she goes, you know, I might not agree with everything that you do for your job. She says, but I have to respect it. She says, because it's going down either way. And dad respect or dad knows. And he respects it. She's like, so, you know, it is what it is more or less. And I'm like, gosh, that's pretty. Um, yeah, pretty profound mature and like wow and I said well 
I feel relieved because I, the last thing I wanted was for you to resent or be really upset with me. And she's like, or hate me. And she's like, I could never hate you. You're my mom. And I said, well, people are going to say pretty negative things to you. I said, but they're also going to say really cool things to you and nice things because we've done a lot of really cool things like within our community and just stuff like that. I said, so there's a lot of people I said, but you know, in life, people are going to say negative things. People are positive things, no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. I said, but what people think of me, I don't really care. Dad doesn't care. I said, all the people that matter to us, all of our family, all of our friends, everybody knows. I said, and I'm your mom. They treat me as Michelle. I said, that is work. That is not who I am. And she's like, I don't really care. She goes, if anyone says anything to to you or to me about you, she goes, I will choke them out because (laughs) she does MMA and it's, she's, I mean, she's, you know, wrestling with kids that are older than her and judo tossing them. And, you know, and, uh, you know, so she, and she's, she's about, she boxes. That's really, she's, she's really good. I, we just had her down, uh, boxing with the world champ, uh, female boxer and, uh, her coach wanted to take her down just to see you know, what she thought. And she says, very coachable girls got talent. Like, so, you know, of course my kid's the best. I don't think that. Okay. (laughs) She can't do gymnastics. I'm like, nope, your cartwheels don't ever think that you you can't honey. Like I'm real when it comes to certain things. Right. But yeah, anyway, so not easy. And, and, you know, and I told her, you know, I'll explain more as she gets older, but she pretty much knows. And, Did you feel uh, relieved when she brought it to you to just be like, okay, uh, let's just have this conversation yeah. and let's move on. Yes, of course. You know, I was sick about it. That would weigh yeah. on my, you know, and I talked to another, um, incredibly beautiful soul performer, human being, Brandy love. Um, I'll, I remember the conversation because I know she's a mom as well. And I said, I don't know how to deal with this. I, you know, I'm struggling with this and I don't know what to do. And, you know, so she was really helpful. One little conversation really did, did help me. So, so, and you know, her coming to me about it. And, and I think it was kind of like, okay, there's, you know, I, it was almost like no white elephant or no, no we did white elephant, no elephant in the room. Right. So her and I, you know, my little one and I, so, so it's good. So that's cool. It is what it is. And I, and I tell her, you know, I mean, cause she's mouthy, Jesus Christ. Like what are these, like, these kids? I'm like, like what, you know, why? I don't, I don't really yell. I don't really have to yell, but when I have to yell, like it pisses me off because <laughs> yeah. why do I have to look like psycho mom with my eyes bulging and my veins popping out of my neck for you to like get your attention, you know? Oh, when it's dad, it's like, oh, okay. Okay. But me I'm not looking forward to that. Oh God. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, stop. Yeah. There was a point to my story, but anyway, but overall good kid. So, <laughs> um, okay. So you mentioned um, the first agent or manager that you worked with. Things didn't really pan out the way that you wanted, mm-hmm. but you had yeah. your own talent agency, correct? Yes. Yes. How did that kind of come together? And what do you look for in your talent? So that really half that whole process happened because of I was just, I was really kind of bitter with, with how my, once I kind of saw how she was treating people, not just me, just, I mean, other talent. And I was like, man, like that sucks. And I wanted to not to spite her, but I wanted to change the way, you know, I saw agents uh, treating girls. I didn't is that like pretty, it. Is that pretty common in that world as well for agents to be, I guess, I don't, I don't know her, what happened, Say whatever. But- Yes. manipulative or, you know, so shady, you shady, know, like yeah. what comes to money and, 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 you know, that type of thing, there are two agents that hands down the best. And that will be if Mark Spiegler, he is a class act. He will help. He is, he's been doing it forever and uh, just a good human being. And he's changed a lot of lives. So Mark Spiegler uh, is incredible. And Mark at, um, ATM LA. So those are the two agencies. Like I would recommend any new girl to go to, you know, oh, cool. if they are not able to represent themselves, you know, but I think it's just, you know, you have a roster of girls and okay, but look, I guess you're to answer your question, you know, looking for girls, you, you want, you know, of course, young always sells the new fresh face, right? The new girls are always, you know, able to star in all types of different roles. Right. And then, you know, longevity, if you have an 18, 19 year old girl, 
you know, and they don't have tattoos. I, I got a fake one, of course, you know, here we go. Oh yeah, I get a fake tattoo. So here I am the guinea pig. Friends are <laughs> one. Anyway, but anyway, so, you know, you look for no tattoos and uh, blondes. Why no tattoos? Just because that's like a thing. Just because prefer? it's just because less marketable in the world in the, it is. So traditionally blondes sell, sell more 18, 19, um, you know, year olds, because they can be stepdaughter. They can, you know, be girlfriend. I mean, they're just, they're just marketable uh, the girl next door type thing. Right. Yeah. And then they evolve. Right. And then they can star in, you know, hot stepmom or however it is that they want to do. So there's a lot of room for them to, you know, I guess in the industry to, to make a lot of money. So everybody always wants to shoot the new girl. So, you know, so, um, yeah, but not always, I mean, you need a variety. I mean, I think variety is a spice of life, right? So you need, sure. you've got to look for, you know, an Asian, a black girl, a, you know, or Latin type girl. So, you know, you just look for people, I mean, I guess with any job, right. Um, yeah. depend, they gotta be, you know, on time dependable, but anytime we had like 18 or 19 year old girls, even up to 20 that would want to sign, I, I just, that maternal instinct kind of kicked in. And I was like, I kind of sometimes would talk them out of it, I feel, but I feel that they, at that age, I was doing so much dumb stuff. Right. And looking back, I'm thinking, oh my God, I wasn't caught. Like, thank God. Right. Mm-hmm. And I always tell them like, this will forever change your life. You can't take it back. You have to. I, so I wouldn't sign them. I gave them like three days. Um, you're gonna take three days and really think about this because your family is going to talk shit, everybody. Okay. And you can't take it back. This could impact your job down the road, the career path, just everything. So if this is what you want to do, you know, you better be committed. So, um, do you feel like it's still like that? Or do you think people have become so much more open-minded to that world and the lives people have lived before the thing that they're doing now? Do you think that that barrier has kind of been dropped a little bit? Maybe a little bit. And I think, I mean, I like that. I like the fact that, you know, we're becoming more Mm open-minded and I just feel if somebody, I don't know, I I always feel like we're, you know, we're so quick to criticize people in the sex industry. However, we're not really that upset at the teacher that just molested your 14. Okay. So I think ethically or like morally, our moral compass as a society is just kind of twisted, you know, and, and that's just yeah. my, you know, I feel like we should, you know, all the sex trafficking and all the shit, you know, we should be more upset about that kind of stuff. Right. 100%. Well, it's like, I mean, uh, if you're in the porn industry, like you're not hurting anybody. It's a decision no. that you've made. It's that's your right. body. It's the things that you want to do, but right. yeah, there's nothing malicious coming no. from it at no. all. No, but it's just not, you know, your typical nine to five and, you know, we have not evolved. I know the, you know, Europe and and they're a little bit more open to that type of thing. And, you know, and, and that's okay. But if, you know, somebody is not breaking the law, they're not, you know, hurting people, you know, they're paying their taxes, you know, although they suck (laughs) ass, you know, I mean, you can't, um, why be pissed off? I mean, I don't know, but it is what it is. How much has the industry changed from when you first got into Mm -hmm. it to how things are now? I love it. I love that it's changed. I am, I am, I feel so much more empowered than when I first started, you know, when I first started, you feel almost at mercy to the directors and the producers and the big companies. And, you know, the competition is just, I feel like it's much more fierce. Okay. Because everybody's competing for the same, so many outlets, holy moly, yes, right. For the, for, and, and that's the primary, right. So it's like, we're in this bubble. So, okay. Have you shot for this company or, you know, this girl and being like, a, you know, back then when I started being a um, contract girl was a big deal. Now you can't, you can't pay my contract. Like, you know, you just can't. And I don't mean it like that. I mean, maybe you can, but you're going to pay a lot and you're going to pay a lot for these other girls because we've taken the power from these companies and we are now in control of our careers. Okay. They don't dictate. Okay. You're not going to just screw that girl. Okay. And promise her the box cover, like some, unfortunately, you know, and, and you're not going to be able to mind fuck these people anymore. It's not going to happen. The power is back um, in the talent's hands. 
Yeah. And I like it. And, you know, and granted, I mean, it takes two to tango. I mean, I get it. Like, you know, nothing wrong to consenting adults, but I just feel like there was just a level of coercion and manipulation a little bit. And that, that pissed me off. So, um, I don't know. I just, I love it. I love the fact that we have all these different platforms to connect with our fans. And I think it's better, not just for us, because here I am just talking about myself and how great it is for us, but for the fans, Mm -hmm. they can connect with us on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. I love one-on-one time. I love being able to just, you know, I'm grateful, you know, for my fans and, you know, it's awesome because because of them, you know, I'm able to, you know, enjoy a good life and, and, you know, and fulfill a fantasy and, and it's mutually satisfying, even if we never, I mean, we're not going to meet most of the time unless I'm at a convention, but at least it's a connection and that's a good thing. So it's fun. Absolutely. Okay. So we know that you're a huge sports fan. I know you're a huge MMA UFC fan. I mean, you just rattled off all the stuff that your daughter's doing as well. Uh, in the jujitsu boxing MMA world. Yeah. How did you kind of gravitate towards, are, are you like other sports as well? Or is that kind of your main deal? No basketball. Oh, that's, that's my main. I played high school. Um, I played a little in college. So I, um, yeah, but I, it was hard for me to coordinate both. I was like, I can't, for me, I had to really focus more on studies and you know, whatever. So, but it, you know, it, it was still a really cool opportunity. So yeah, basketball, I've been playing basketball since first grade. So I love basketball. That is, Oh my God. I love it. <laughs> love it. So really that's like my number one. Who's your team? Well, God, sadly, you know, I, I'm a tried and true fan. Okay. I'm from Detroit. So it's my Pistons, you know, the <laughs> yeah. bad boys back in the day, they're hanging up over there. I can see them. Okay. Um, <laughs> from the Isaiah Thomas all the way to, you know, when it was uh, Rip Hamilton and Ben Wallace and yeah. So yeah. So Detroit, but, um, I've always loved the bulls too. And they've always mm-hmm. been rivals, but I love Michael Jordan goat. I don't care. Go. So it's Michael Jordan. Then it's Kobe Bryant. Those are the top two. So anybody <laughs> want to debate, come at me because they are <laughs> the top go. two period. <laughs> Where does LeBron sit for you? You know, LeBron. Okay. He's in that picture there. I don't know if you can see that my little picture. Okay. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's up there, but, um, he, he's always had a lot of help. No, I mean, best player in the league hands down, but, uh, right now, but you know, he's always had a little bit of help. And I think, you know, Jordan made Scotty Pippen. He built that. Okay. So, sure. uh, I mean, I can't take anything away, but in my eyes, and maybe it's because I grew up with them you know, or grew up watching them, you know, it's going to be Jordan, but I mean, hats off to LeBron. I mean, one of the greatest players of all time it. as well. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, so UFC, so I, I always see you tweeting UFC. I know that you're a wrestling fan as well. Yeah. Where did your fandom for those sports come yeah. from? So wrestling, oh my gosh, always as a kid. I remember I was such How did a you dork. not get into wrestling? I feel like you could have been in wrestling. Who knows? Because, you know, I was too busy playing basketball and I don't know. I mean, it was a tomboy. I broke my finger fighting a boy in like second grade, and whatever, just dumb stuff. But, um, I mean, I was such a dork. I, I remember watching when Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant fought and Hulk lost. I was crying like a baby. I'll never forget that. I'm like, who does that? Like, anyway, it was so real to me. So I I grew up watching it. I loved it. Um, It was just, I don't know. It was just really cool. And I, you know, as a tomboy, so I had like the wrestlers and I'd have the fake blood and, you know, I was a real, maybe I wanted to be a boy. I don't know. Whatever. Big tomboy. Right. Maybe explains my bi furiousness, whatever. (laughs) Anyway. So So yeah, so always grew up watching that. And then, you know, I started to watch, you know, UFC. I remember, you know, watching Misha Tate fight before our little one was born. So I just, I love, and I love boxing too, you know, but it just wasn't, I feel like that kind of faded away and I don't know. But um, yeah. I just I was watched it. Yeah, I love boxing. It's starting to come back, which I think I is was great. just going to say, yeah. What do you think about this resurgence of boxing? Because it's definitely getting a little bit more love. And how much credit do you give to Logan Paul for that? Yeah, well, Logan Jake and Jake Paul. Paul. Both. Yeah, Jake I Paul. know what you meant. Yeah, yeah the same. Yeah. I know they're kind of <laughs> hand hand. Yeah. You know, at first I was kind of like a hater on Jake Paul. I'm like, he's an ass. And I'm like, not a fan. However, he's actually done a good thing. He's a great promoter, right? He's yeah. actually given back to the UFC and the boxing community. Okay. As far as helping people and 
he's brought the hype. So, you know, he give credit where credit's due and the kid's not a bad boxer. He's a big no. boy. I mean, he really is. And he's got, you know, Benjamin Flores, former champ. Okay. Kudos to you, uh, BJ. So, uh, in his corner. So, I mean, Hey, got to give credit where credit's due. And I, I, and I like his style. He's kind of like the Conor McGregor. You love him or you hate him. Yeah. I got love for him now. So my apologies for, you know, he's an ass, but he's really not. So, um, so that's awesome. I love that. So I guess I like combat sports. I just, I love it. I like, I guess I like to get down and dirty. Okay. Great. No Good. pun intended. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> what was your reaction to Juliana Pena uh, dethroning Amanda Nunes? Holy shit. Wow. I have chills right now. Okay. And these little <laughs> non-tan arms. Ah, <laughs> oh, chills. Wasn't oh. that just unbelievable? I chills. Okay. I feel it's funny. I still feel the same way. I mean, for you to say you have chills, it's like, I mean, even though that was weeks ago that that happened, it's like every now and then it like pops in your head. You're like, holy shit. What a moment that I was just, I think, okay. So part of me thinks this is here. Uh, part of me thinks that, you know, Amanda was kind of avoiding her for a reason. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it seems like they weren't, it, you know, she'd call her out and for whatever happens or for whatever reason it didn't happen. And, um, I, I, well, she obviously underestimated her. I think it was just Amanda's cardio. I don't think she thought it was going to go the distance. Right. So she was like gassed. Yes. So I was, I think it was great because I, to me, uh, hats off to Amanda. I mean, one of the greatest, you know, female fighters of, of all time. However, I never really cared for the way she celebrated after her wins. I always thought she was a little pompous, but then I thought maybe it's a cultural thing. I just thought it was just like too, like, I don't know. That's just me though. Um, but who's to say how I would celebrate. She was pretty gracious in defeat though. I will say. Yes. Yes, she was. And that is okay. So then I kind of, when she was like that, I was like, okay, you know what? She was a great loser, so to speak for that. You know, when she lost, (laughs) she was, she really, she, she was classy with it. She was um, yeah, it, I mean, she handled it well and, um, I don't know. I, I just can't wait for them to fight. You know, it's going to happen. It has to happen. It has, it has to. to. So, but I think, I think Amanda needed to be humbled. Yeah. Someone had to do it. I, I mean, it was either that or she's going to retire, uh, as double champ. Uh, so yeah. now it's, yeah, I, I love that it went the way that it did. Me um, too. for female fighters in UFC, what's your reaction to sort of the backlash that some of the fighters have gotten from their OnlyFans account? Somebody like Jessica Andrade, um, for her getting some backlash for having an OnlyFans account and seeing that um through the sports world. Well, I think they can all go f- themselves, and I'm gonna tell you why. Sorry if I'm being too vulgar. It pisses me off. Okay, you want you you the men want it all. Okay, women, you know, you want it all. It's like don't put me in a bubble. You can be this, or you can be that. No, you can be whatever you want to be in this world today, man or woman, trans, whoever, whatever you want to be, whatever makes you happy. So if you can monetize based on your appearance and that's what you choose to do, go for it. If you, you, you can monetize on your appearance and you choose not to, that's fine too. If you still happen to be a great fighter, and you know, you're beautiful and, and who cares? Just let people do what they want to do. Because you know what, at the end of the day, are you paying their bills? Are you like setting up their retirements and their, their kids college fund? Are you doing any of that for them? Yeah. You can shut up period. What do you think that says about kind of fighter pay as well? Is it something of just like trying to make money on the side as well, or it's wanting to, you know, being confident in your body and wanting to share that with people. I mean, I guess it depends on which side it falls on, but I, I mean, you're entitled to any option. Yes. yes. Good question. And, you know, I think that all, all depends on somebody's circumstances, right? I mean, uh, as far as fighter pay goes, you know, do I always think, you know, that people should be paid a little bit more when, you know, they choose to get into the ring and, and then there's, you know, people saying, well, they know what they're getting into and all this and all of that, you know, I guess it just depends. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm kind of like, substantial. yeah, I guess I'm on the fence. It would be really nice, uh, if they were paid or if they were incentivized a little bit more, um, mm-hmm. sponsorships and things like that, or there were more opportunities. So, you know, I don't know that, 
maybe these fighters would go down that road on the only fans, right? I don't know that I would have gone down that road if I made more as a nurse and I could maybe, you know, but again, am I being greedy because, you know, oh, well, didn't you make enough money as a nurse and, you know, this and that? And it's like, well, yeah, if it were only me, I had to take care of, but sure, my family's kind of like Jerry Springer. Okay. Love him to death, <laughs> but I got a lot of mouths to feed. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone's hungry. They all got to eat. Yeah. So, um, so it just depends. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just, it's interesting to see. Um, I know it was, I mean, it was probably a couple of weeks ago at this point, but I remember Britain Hart had said something about that of like, you know, if you're, mm-hmm. if you're out there doing only fans and you're, I think she was talking about page fans, Sant, maybe, um, again, I just, just think stop. that's what that she was. Needs to just stop. <laughs> I, know. I know. Give the girl a break. You beat her. Please. Isn't that enough? Stop. I know. Let the girl live. Let her live. I just want to see Paige Van Sant join pro wrestling because I think that's where she belongs. I do too. 100%. I love Paige is great. And I like Britain. I interviewed her down in um, Tampa when I was down there before. And uh, yeah, she's great. You know, and I don't know. I don't know what's up with those statements. I like her, but maybe there's just some beef going on more yeah. that we don't know. Or it's like so. some kind of like low hanging fruit. You feel like you can like jump on it and talk a little shit. Right. Whatever. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. Um, Beauty and the Beast podcast. Tell me yes. about this. How did it start? Okay. What's the mission statement? Sure. Okay. So uh, back, I don't know, maybe a little over a year ago, people were like, oh, you should do a podcast. I thought, yeah, really, what am I going to talk about? Uh, not really, I'm not all that exciting. However, whatever, I guess fans think that, you know, you are for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah. So thank you guys for that. <laughs> and um, Julie and I had connected through um, a mutual friend in Vegas and he just showed up at one of my events that I was hosting and we just chit chatted. And he had like a level of humor. I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm not real creative. I'll be honest, or I'm very scientific and very like, I like to read fact. I don't get into fiction. Like my, I'm, I don't know. My brain's kind of, it is what it is. So kind of nerdy, <laughs> but whatever. And he was brought an element. I, I thought he would bring like an element of humor and all that, you know, some other dynamic, like another, a different dynamic, I guess. Yeah. And he knew about fighting and I was like, Oh, cool. You know, at that time he was injured and I didn't think at that time, or he never mentioned that he was going to go, go back. He just said, I used, you know, used to fight. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I don't care if this guy ever goes back, at least I can get some education and he can add something to the podcast. So yeah. that's kind of, so I asked him, I'm like, would you be interested in maybe being my co-host on, on my show? And he's like, oh yeah, that would be cool. So we just, we're kind of doing it for fun and we're still doing it for fun. It's on hold right now because we're finally taking it, I don't know, to the next level, whatever the hell that Good. means, but we are, um, talking, we have, uh, two people or hotels that we're talking about, uh, uh, getting residency at in Vegas. Ooh, so, okay. Yeah. So we're going to structure it a little bit different where it's just going to be kind of, uh, episodes and seasons just because his schedule is crazy. Yeah. And, it can be a lot. Know. I mean, it's a big job. It certainly yeah. is. I think people don't, people underestimate like turning on a mic and doing a show. They think it's much easier than it is, but it's quite time yeah. consuming. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we had our, uh, producer, uh, we have a call on the third, fourth, third or fourth, I have it in my calendar and we are going to narrow it down to, you know, as far as residency and then, uh, st- structuring the show. So awesome. it will start up again, more towards the end of January, beginning of February. And then we'll actually have a plan where we can have a little bit more structure to the show. Okay. And, and st- I mean, it's still going to be fun, but it'll be. I don't know. I think just more consistent and we won't have to stress about it as much. So we're placing it not in everybody else's hands. We'll still have some creative control. However, a lot of the like behind the scenes stuff, like I'm terrible at like editing, uploading, like what are you talking about? Thank God I have these amazing people on this call right now. If they weren't here, I would not be here. Like, thank God. Yeah. So need them. Yeah. So thank you know, so that's, that's, uh, Julian and, um, Yeah. And he would be like, Oh, it's your show. It's your show. I'm like, no, it's our show. And I'm like, and I think maybe he was afraid to take ownership of it. Cause you know, we kind of suck, you know, right now, but (laughs) I mean, Hey, it is what it is, 
Uh, but that's okay. That's, you know, you, you, you have to learn, you know, that you suck or not really good at something before you can get better. And, and that's it's just a like, learning curve. It's totally yeah. a learning curve. And you know, when you're, I think when you're in place with the right people, oh gosh, I'm going to sneeze. Woo. Okay. I think I'm okay. Look Woo, at the light. Me there. <laughs> it's not the light. Bright, there's nowhere bright enough in here to, to do that with. Um, but no, it's, yeah, I think it's definitely like that learning curve of doing that like long format. Mm-hmm. Um, cause if you just hop on and you're just shooting the shit that can get like, oh my God, by Daunting. the end of it, what the f- are we talking about anymore? When like, you can actually have a show structure and have people to kind of help prod you along with different things. It makes all the difference in the world. So yeah, I'm glad so. that you guys are doing that. Um, okay. Yeah. 2022. What else do you have in store for 2022? Oh, what is going on in the world of Kendra lust? Okay. Well, you know, obviously I'm still working on my, my only fans. And that's like, to me, I like being able to create new, new scenes and things for, you know, my fans, but I like to be able to do it. I don't do a ton of it. Like I honestly, I don't shoot in Michigan. I fly to Vegas and I have a team there, a production team. And, and we shoot, you know, I don't know, every couple of months. And then, you know, which is nice. So I still have like new stuff coming out. However, I'm working on a, um, and I really not really talking about it, uh, NFT. So that is, Jesus Lord. Like there's so much to learn about that. Right. I, Those. Is, you literally said the words NFT and I'm like, I don't understand anymore. Like it goes so over my head. Holy shit. Yeah. So on, yeah. So that is really the project that is huh, consuming a lot of my time. And then, um, I do have a local business here, which is, um, is good. It's just, again, that's, you know, it's, uh, you know, just trying to oversee that cultivating and yeah. the, it's great. We're green here in Michigan now. So it's exciting. Uh, I don't smoke or anything like that, but, um, you know, for medicinal purposes and, you know, Hey, it's better than people, I think popping pills and, you know, as long as they're 100%. safe with it and, you know, Hey, just yeah. whatever you gotta do. So, um, uh, w- working on, on that. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of low key. I don't, you know, I wasn't even going to really say anything about NFT because I, you know, I've done that before. We're like, yeah, I'm working on this. And if it doesn't come to fruition, I look like an ass. So, well, so but yeah, but put it out there anyways, it either yeah. pushes you along or, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, you know, that's, that's it. I mean, as far as, I don't know, resolutions, people say, do you have anything for 2022? I don't really know. I mean, I have, I do want to go out of state to visit this uh, doctor. He's a functional medicine doctor. And Mm. I think I'm not like opposed to Western medicine, but I'm kind of like in the middle and I just want to, you know, go, go to the facility and, and learn about nutrition and, you know, the, like the food and, and drug industry that's a whole other rant. You think about like all these drug cartels and these drug dealers. No, the food industry is the biggest drug dealer out there. So I'm just going to learn how to get healthy and just educate myself and maybe get some labs done and just to maybe help, you know, get help more healthy within. Uh, So that's something cool I want to do. So what are some, would you have like some like nagging things that you're trying to take care of health wise? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's just, you know, sometimes, and it's so weird, you know, my joints a little bit will feel achy for no reason. Oh my God. Join the club. You wake up one day. I'm like, why? And, and my doctor's like, well, this is just arthritis. It's, and I said, arthritis usually is progressive, right? Your osteoarthritis. Sure. Okay. This is like an inflammatory something. It just, I woke up one morning and my pinky says, F- you like, you're not going to bend. I don't like you. Like you're just going to be swollen and you're going to walk around. Like, you know, it's um, so weird. So, I I've, I've had yeah. really bad joint problems since I had my yes. daughter yes. where like my hips hurt, my knees hurt. I wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and my ankles are stiff. And like my wrists, it's, I mean, it, it, during the day it's fine, but when it's like, once they've rested for a little bit, yes. like, like I've never yeah. had that before in yeah. my life. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. So I guess the, the one thing I'll say about, about, um, I guess health in general is I've learned that most of our, like our immunity, you know, and our health, it starts in the gut. So mm-hmm you know, I wasn't taking a probiotic. I wasn't drinking enough water or, you know, drink or uh, taking fiber or, you know, these like just little things that can really help. So just being more conscientious of what we put into our bodies and uh, hopefully a little will rub off on these junk food junkies because it's (laughs) like, you know, I tricked them the other day and I made like gluten-free, um, 
and I'm not like crazy, but there is science behind it. I listen to podcasts all day long, the nerd in me, right. About that kind of stuff. So, so I made this like really good dish and well, at least I thought it was it. They thought it was good, but it's like, they didn't really go back. You know, there were leftovers and then they go back from where I was like, they didn't (laughs) love it, but they ate it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Free pasta and like a Turkey kind of like this, uh, like tomato basil, kind of like a creamy cheese. It was pretty good, but they didn't even know it was gluten-free. I felt like, yes. Like I, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> that's whatever. Great. Well, I'm, I'm all about, uh, getting healthier and learning more and figuring all that stuff out. So for sure, uh, pass on any knowledge that you gain help. I will. <laughs> I promise I will, because you know, they're tired of me stuffing it down their throats. Oh, here we go. Here yeah. we go. Mom's got something to say. I'm like, okay, fine. I don't care. I'm going to eat this date, this big ass oh, date. I love a date. I love me a date. Oh my God. Like, An oat date bar all day, every day. Right. 100%. Um, my last question to you, um, how many athletes slide into yeah. your DMS on the regular? Can't even disclose. <laughs> Can't even disclose. And, and that's no, I mean, but look at how many athletes there's hundreds of thousands. They're all over. So, you know, but yeah, so, but gotta you know, shoot, gotta times, shoot your shot, you know, that's right. And I'm not mad at them. Hey, keep them coming. You know, I'm grateful. I'll, hey, how you doing? But you know, I, I, I put it out there, you know, I'm married and you know, it's cool, but I think it's respecting after that, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's cool. It's all good. Hey, I, hey, when they stop, I'll probably be, you know, like, okay, time to hang up right. the song, honey. So I'm flattered. I'm not the type of girl like, oh yeah. I'm just like, oh wow. Ooh. Yeah. I'm all okay. excited. I know. Okay, good. Mama still got it. <laughs> That's awesome. Nope. Well, Kendra, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. It was awesome to chat to you and just get to meet you this way. I mean, I've been able to yeah. see you on uh, social media and all that. So it's great to be able to actually talk to you and pick your brain. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I'm always like, like, why? Oh, someone wants to. Okay. All right, cool. I get, I still get excited. I'm flattered. So thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure. So definitely. I know Misha and I have been, uh, we, we've been dying to get you on our, um, XM show too. So for that one. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. Well, I hope you, your family and your team, all you, uh, fellows and ladies behind the screen, um, and behind the scenes have a beautiful, happy, safe, healthy uh, new year. So you too. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye Kendra.